Hello, we're going to introduce you to the, the newest of the dialysis machines. Uh, the most significant change is going to be the controller. I'm going to take the cover off so you can see it a little bit more clear. The cover just pulls off these little plastic rivets. So this controller uses a cell constant of 10. It's a much more high-end controller than our previous version. It has a few more capabilities to it. A little bit finer increments, a, a more steady control. All in all, it's it just a better robust commercial controller. I'm going to uh, assume that you've watched previous videos of our last dialysis machine that kind of goes over all the other aspects of the dialysis machine. I will briefly touch on them, but for this video, I really want to concentrate on the controller itself and how you might want to set this controller uh, for your particular application. So we are reading in millisiemens. So 51.3 right now, the, the, the cover actually has a chart on it. It has a chart for PPT, specific gravity, and millisiemens. So 51.3 right now, would be about 1.025. So we have the, uh, the conductivity probe right now in a solution of 53 millisiemens. And you can see that if we take it out and we put it in another solution, it does have to have movement. If it's stagnant, in it, it, it really won't read as well. So this should be in, a, in your sump that does not have air bubbles from your protein skimmer, but it's in, a good, it's in a good flowing area. You'll notice a few things changing in here. The lights, I will go over that in a minute. These lights are indicating things that will happen. And of course, if we put it in a really high uh, salinity, such as what's gonna be in your salt container of totally saturated salt, the number eventually go very high here. So let's for now uh, go over a little bit of the basics of the machine first before we move into the controller. So it's, it's the same design below as the previous dialysis machine. We do have a one micron um, pleated filter, which is the first filter in line for the, uh, from your water house supply. So this is a very fine filter. It will take out all the iron and particles down to one micron. And since these canisters are clear, you'll, you can pretty easily see that that's when they need to be changed. The second one is a very dense one micron carbon filter. This is not the type of filter that you can get at Home Depot. This is a, it's a much higher rated filter. It's much heavier and it'll last a lot longer and possibly what you could find at Home Depot. And it's it just recommended that you use this. That would be this one here. When the machine comes, it does have the wrapping on the filter. So please take the wrapping off before you operate the machine. Otherwise, you're gonna call us and say you're not getting any water through. The last filter on the hanging filters is a color changing mixed bed deionizing cartridge. So you're all familiar with how these work. As the uh, solids get consumed within the DI, the resin changes color. So once this goes completely to brown at the top, you're gonna start getting TDS in your water. That's total dissolved solids. Now behind, behind these canisters, there is a 75 gallon a day RO membrane. So the sequence is the water will come in from the house water supply into your one micron filter, into your carbon block, from the carbon block to the reverse osmosis, out of the reverse osmosis, into the DI filter, out of the DI filter, up into the head unit, which I'll, I'll show you what, what happens there. So either we're going to be sending water to autofill 
or we're going to be using that DI water to, to flush out the uh, human artificial kidney. Now I hope you've uh, read about how this, this device works. In short, um, this is a human artificial kidney that is in actual use on humans. And what happens in this type of filter, they're called ultra, ultra pure filters, but what happens is there's like 10,000 strands of filament in here and those strands are hollow. And the outer core of the filament has pores and they measure those pores in Dalton, so it's very fine. So this is typically used for human blood to be run through the center of this core and it'll come out this end and at the same time, deionized water will come in the top, circulate around those pores, and exit out here as waste. Now, if this is being used on humans, the doctor's gonna prescribe a saline solution that matches your body. So it's going to try to keep the salt that's within your body still in the, you know, it's still in your blood. Because if you lose the salt in your body, that your pH is gonna crash and it could kill you. So in our purpose, the reason we're using a dialyzer membrane is we want to remove the toxins that are in the aquarium. And this is not discriminant except for salt. I mean, it'll take out uh, phosphate, nitrate, nitrate, ammonia. It's not a living organism, so it doesn't care. It's not gonna die if you have too much ammonia in the tank. It's not gonna be affected if you have very high nitrate or very high phosphate. The benefit again of this is that it is going to take the water out of your aquarium and it's going to hold back the salt because the membrane pores inside here are designed to hold back salt, just the same as it would do in a human. So let's move on a little bit. So if you come around to this side over here, Um, when you get your machine, there's a cover on the back. You take the thumb screws out. And you can just lift off this top. And you can see in here there's all kinds of electrical and plumbing all mixed together. There's solenoid valves here for your autofill, for your water valve and for your, uh, it's called, um, th there's another valve that sends water down to, you, to your uh, dialyzer membrane when you're not autofilling. There is a port here for your float switch. This float switch will go in your sump and this, this float switch is kept at the level that you wanna maintain in your sump. When the float switch is hanging, this machine will stop the dialysis, dialysis process and it'll only add DI water to your tank. Once the DI water fills up your sump and it goes to here, it will start the dialysis process. Um, if you ever had to uh, send your uh, computer back for service, the whole machine can stay plugged in. You take out one screw here and this whole head unit will slide out. You disconnect this cannon plug, you can send this unit in for service. All these are color coded. We're going to give you we're going to give you all the tubing you need so you're going to have your green water which is your uh, salt water going back to your aquarium the yellow is wastewater going down the drain the blue is the autofill the black is the house water supply coming from your house the red is coming from your aquarium this is the water that we're going to treat and then there's the gray, which this is going to go to a salt container that you're gonna put any brand of salt that you like, and it's gonna dissolve that salt to saturation, and the machine will drip, 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 drip the salt into your, into your system until the conductivity controller reads the level of salt that you wanna maintain in your aquarium. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about that in the front. So, in the front here, we have a digital, we have a, a digital timer that has little tabs that you push down. So there's no menu. It's just a simple commercial timer 
that you set the time of day and you push in every pin, there's, you push in a pin and every pin would equal 0.4 gallons of water. It's very simple to figure that out. Every pin is 0.4 gallons of water. Over here, we have the, a DC pump, peristaltic pump. This is the pump that comes on that changes the water in the aquarium. This pump comes on when the salt is low, it's below our set point, it will activate this pump, it will take water out of the aquarium, it will put the water from your aquarium into the bottom of the salt bucket, that water will rise up through the salt container, which will dissolve any brand of salt you like to saturation. The saturated water will be already at the top of the, the bucket and then there'll be a pipe that leads from that bucket and it will drip into your sump, drip by drip by drip, until the conductivity controller goes within your set point. So it's very accurate. Um, there's, a, there's a flow meter here because what sometimes we need to do is depending on where you mount this machine, if it's below your sump or if it's above your sump or if it's a far, far distance away, we're gonna need to put a head pressure. By turning this knob to the right, we're actually putting a head pressure on the water that's going through the dialyzer so it actually forces more water to leave, more salt water to leave going down the drain. Now right now what happened is, as I was talking to you, the timer got to the first time of the day that we had set the controller. And it's actually changing water. And remember I said it's changing water at a rate of 0.4 gallons for every segment, or 1.4 gallons every hour. Now, the reason that the water is changing right now is because the float switch is satisfied. If this were to fall, there's a time delay built in, and it's gonna turn off that water changing feature because we don't wanna take water out of the tank if the float switch is below the set point in your sump. So right now, what's happening is it has paused the, the, the removing of water. Maybe you would have heard, but there is a, a, a valve that just came on and it is diverting the deionized water that would have naturally been going to the top of this dialyzer, flushing it out. It is actually sending straight DI water right to your sump. And that's at, uh, the membrane is actually 70 gallons a day. So it's a pretty good flow. So again, what's gonna happen is the water's gonna eventually go back up, your sump is gonna fill, and it's gonna resume water change. Okay? So let's move on. I'm gonna turn this pump off for now by just lowering that float switch. So right now, we're, we're at a value that is higher than the set point that I wanna keep my salt. So the salinity so the salt pump is not activated. If I were to take the probe out and put it in a solution that's below, you'll see, no, actually what it did is it just went so far below it to put the machine in alarm. So it'll have to come back up again a little bit. Now it's, now it's back up. When I had taken the probe out, it went completely out of the water and it told the machine that, hey, there's not enough salt in the system, we must shut down. But now that we're at 47, which is below our low setting, which I'm gonna show you how to set, it's saying, add salt to the tank. Now we can be adding salt to the tank the same time we're changing water. We can be adding salt to the tank the same time that we're just adding DI. If this flow switch drops, it's gonna, it's gonna shut this pump off. So let me focus a little bit on this controller because I've gone over a lot of this before in detail on, on other machines, but I want you to zoom in on this controller here. So you can see that there's five buttons across the bottom here. At the top, it says 7.83. That's just millivolts or voltage that it is that's coming off the back of this controller if you wanted to go to a, a separate display somewhere and measure voltage, okay? 
So now it's telling us that it's measuring conductivity. The water is 73.7 degrees, the date and the time. So to get into the control mode, we want to hit escape. We press this and the code, the factor code is 0000. We hit enter and it says correct. Now you get a chance, you can change that if you have kids in the house or if you have service people come over and you don't want them to ever mess with that, you can change that code to whatever you like. So the first thing on the menu is system settings. If I hit enter, it's gonna ask me the language. And of course we want English and the only other option is Chinese. And then, of course, if you wanted to change your password, you could, but here it's set to zero. Anytime you want to back out, you hit escape. And, of course, you can go to date, depending on how you like the date format, whether it's month, day, year, year, day, month, you can change that here. And then, of course, you go down again, hit date settings. You can do all that. Now, what's important to us, I'm going to already have that all set up for you. Also, if you're a person that doesn't like the display to stay on 24 hours a day, you can set it to be on for 30 seconds without pushing the button, 60 seconds, 120 seconds, or always. I prefer always. Anytime you want to back out, you hit the escape button. So now I want to go to sensor settings. So I backed out by hitting the escape button. I'm going to go down. I'm going to drop to number two by hitting the down arrow. I'm going to hit the enter button and it's going to say display mode. We're going to be at the zero to 200 millisiemens because most aquariums run at 53 millisiemens. So the option above that is too low, 20, 20 millisiemens or microsiemens would be the one below that or 200 microsiemens. Now that's if you wanted to measure something like DI water. Since we're gonna be measuring salt water, we would, the machine's gonna come set to the 200 millisiemens, microsiemens, or millisiemens. Okay, so we're gonna hit escape. The next thing is the coefficient. Again, this uh, machine is gonna be set up for a cell constant of 10. Our other controller, significantly different, was a cell constant of one. So that is a very big difference between this controller and our last controller. All right, so if you had to change, if you were calibrating your probes, let's say, and you had some other means of very accurately measuring what your uh, millisiemens were, if you were to just change this number, so right now it's measuring 57.4, if you brought that arrow over and you went up a little bit, you would see that it changed this number. Don't recommend that you do that. You really don't need to. If it does need to, it indicates usually that your probe is clogged or needing cleaning. And that's simply with lemon juice. Very carefully, you take a brush and you just brush inside this area in here and you clean out that. I like to just blow on it with DI water. So we're gonna go back here to 10 and then I'm gonna hit enter, and it's gonna ask me, are you sure? And I'm gonna say, okay. I like the digital filter to be set at low. There's low, medium, high. Basically, it just dampens the oscillation of the machine. It makes it a little bit more deadened so it doesn't flop around so quickly. And the temperature mode on this particular controller is set to NTF. Okay, so we're gonna back out now to output settings. Now this is, this is where you're gonna set this, the set points of your aquarium where you're gonna keep your water parameters. So you go to output settings. And just, just again, let's back out a second. I'm gonna hit escape, zero, 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 enter. I'm gonna scroll down. This first one was sensor, system settings, second one sensor settings, the third one is output settings. I'm gonna hit enter. Now relay one, that's this top relay right here. That's the one I wanna set up first. So I'm gonna hit that. Now it says relay one mode. I'm gonna hit enter. That one is gonna be set for low. Again, this is gonna come like this. We'll not have to change that. 
I'm gonna hit escape. Now I'm gonna drop down, relay one set point. This is the, this is the set point that I wanna keep my aquarium at. I wanna keep my aquarium in this particular to 50 millisiemens. 50 millisiemens, if, if we were to look at the chart, would be 1.0247. Not quite enough for a reef tank, but pretty close. You can easily just scroll over, hit the arrow up one button, hit enter, say okay, and that's done. But this customer asked for 50, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it back. So I'm gonna hit enter again, scroll over, go down, so it's reading 50, hit enter, again I have to say okay, and that's in there. Now, you'll see that there's, below that, it says relay number one hysteresis. What this is, is just like an air conditioning setting in your house, if you set your thermostat to 72 degrees, it has to go a certain value below, below 72 degrees and a certain value above 73 before it actually turns on the compressor. I like to keep that as close as possible. So I have it set to one millisiemens. You hit enter, you say okay, and you're there. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna back out and we're gonna go to relay two. Hit the down arrow, go to relay two. And again, the mode is, this one is gonna be on the high setting. The other one was on low. We're not gonna have to worry about that because that's factory. We're gonna come down, we're gonna hit relay two set point. Hit enter, now I have that set at 44. Now, what that means is, as this machine is operating, the salinity in your aquarium is going to drop because this dialyzer, even though it's designed to hold back salt, it will remove salt out of your water. It's just uh, a very, much more efficient means of cleaning your water. It's not taking all the salt out of your system. A, 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 a direct water changer would take all the salt out of your system where a, a water changer that has a dialyzer is only removing 40% of the salt and retaining 60% of the original salt. So that is a cost saving, not only with DI water, but with salt water. So in this case, I have set 44. So if this, if this, could, if this machine is ever registering 44, it's going to totally shut off this machine. Now, some people bring this value up to within a couple of points of their set point. If you have a, you know, a reef tank that has very um, specific values for your salinity, you're going to want to bring this very high. But keep in mind that if you have to keep your salt uh, container full because as soon as it goes below by one point on that hysteresis, it's going to shut off. But you'll get used to that. And also the best thing to do is always keep your salt bucket full. So I'm backing out now because I, again, there was a, uh, here there's the hysteresis on the, on the low. It is set at one. You can make that higher if you want. I like, I like one. I'm backing all the way out now. And now you see it's 47.3. If you remember, we were at 44 to turn it off. And we were at, I believe, 51 as our set point. So because we're not below 44, the machine is still operating and the salt pump is working. If I were to take this probe out for a second, and it dropped below that 44, it shuts off the machine. If I were to put the probe back in the aquarium at 53, it takes a little time for the water to get all around the sensor and start registering. You notice now is we're past that 51, so it doesn't need to turn on their salt pump. If we wanted to see this thing change water or again we would see that all we have to do is drop the float switch now again it's doing this because we're on a timer segment if the time goes on and it goes past the timer segment this machine is now off it's waiting for your next segment 
So the cover again snaps on. Just push these little pins in all the way. The manual <coughs> describes every color coding of, of the tubing, where they go. It describes the float switch, where you want to put it in your float, in your sump. It describes each one of the canisters, the left, the middle, the right. It describes the dialyzer filter, which is the filter in the front. Usually they last three months. Again, uh, another way that you can change these is by looking at your DI filter. If your DI filter gets consumed, if you have high TDS in your water and some of that uh, high TDS is getting through your RO filter, your, your DI filter is going to consume faster. You might want to consider a pre-filter before this machine to save on expense of the DI filters. The conductivity probe is very, very important to this machine. Um, you notice that there's some controllers out there that they'll say right on the box that they cannot control your conductivity. They cannot control your water change. It says right on the box for monitoring only. I won't get into names, but you can just look at the box that you bought and it'll say monitoring only. This machine is designed to change your water accurately with a very expensive controller. However, everything comes down to this probe. <clears throat> It's very delicate. It cannot be dropped. If it gets, if it gets uh, um, detritus or salt or something encrusted on it, it is not gonna read correctly. And you're gonna be wondering, what the heck do I do? Generally, all you do is I take a lemon myself and I cut the lemon, I squeeze the lemon into a cup. I put, I put the probe into the street of lemon juice and I swirl it around and that lemon, believe it or not, will remove most everything on that probe. I will have some DI water, I'll dip it in there many times, I'll blow on the probe, I'll put it back in the DI water, blow it on the probe, and boom, it usually goes right back to working correctly. If you find that it's erratic, change the probe. It's not that difficult, there's four screws on the back of the machine. You change the probe. Um, so that's pretty much it. We do want to uh, let you know that if you are, the next couple of months anyway, uh, buying a dialysis machine, you will be getting one of our comprehensive water test kits. This is ICP and nutrient analysis. This is the most of any of these ICP tests on the market today. We're doing over 80 analytes. You do get two bottles in every kit. It's a, it has an excellent, excellent web interface which shows all the gauges, all the parameters, and you can even see, you can compare your aquarium water to the oceans that are out there, or we have about 10 salt brands, maybe 15 salt brands or you can compare your, your readings to your past readings or a history. So take advantage of that. It's only take, there's a FedEx label included in this kit. So you don't have to take it to the post office. This doesn't have to be sent to Germany by way of California and take two weeks plus. This usually gets to us in two days from anywhere in the country. You get your results the third or fourth day. Um, you can get this either from Sea Visions or you can go to Amazon and get it. And that's it for now. And I'll be showing you another video pretty soon of a, a, a very new device that we have. It's called the Mini OC, which is going to be eliminating this controller. And uh, keep a keep an eye out for that. It's this particular unit right now is selling for twenty seven hundred dollars, and the Mini OC is going to be twelve hundred and fifty. The difference between the Mini OC and the dialysis machine is this machine will make salt water, make DI water, and change that in your aquarium. Where the Mini OC, you will have to have a container of salt water and a container of DI water. 
and it you can have any brand of salt you want, even even uh, regular ocean water, and it will pull the water out of you, out of those containers and change water in your tank. This machine makes the water automatically. So if you have any questions, you can always uh, reply on the uh, YouTube video or send us an email at uh, sales at cvisions.com and uh, we'd be glad to help you size this to any aquarium you have. This particular unit will do a 2,000 gallon reef tank or a 2,000 gallon fish tank. Thank you for watching.